Hi friends, students and viewers. Thank you so much for your support for my first video, Derivation of Full Superelevation. Now, in this video, we are going to learn about some basics of transportation engineering to all road users. transportation engineering will useful to understand for all viewers for my upcoming videos the first terminology what is meant by road user what is the meaning of road user the road user mean those who are all using a road all are called the road users they may be whether the pedestrian the pedestrian means those who are walking on a road they are called as a pedestrian the next one, those who are using cycle on a road, they are called as a cyclist. The last one, motorist, those who are using car, two-wheeler or any kind of motor vehicle, they are called as a motorist. So these persons are called as a road user. Change never change. As like this quote, the modes of transportation engineering also never change. The classification of the transportation engineering classify into three categories based on the land, based on the water and based on the air. The first one, the based on the land again classify into two categories. One is highway or roadway. The highway or roadway will use all vehicles. The second category in the land, it is a railway. The railway will use in a trains. The train may be categorized into two classification. One is passenger train, another is a goods train. This is the, the transportation based on the land category. The second case of the second mode of transportation by means of water. The water can be classified into two categories. One is inland water transportation. Next one is oceanic water transportation. The inland water transportation means the transportation by using river or pond. It is called as inland water transportation. In this river and boat, we are going to use only boat. The next one, the oceanic water transportation. In this oceanic water transportation means ocean and sea we are going to use. In this ocean or sea, we are going to use for only ships. The last one, the air transportation. We know that it is an airway. In this airway transportation, we are going to use only flights and helicopters. This is the different modes of classification of transportation. This is the very basic. We are going to discuss about only highway engineering or roadway engineering. We are not going to discuss about the, the water or railway or airway engineering. We will discuss in this topic in future videos. In transportation engineering, for roads, usually we used to call it as a link. The same like that, all the intersection we used to call it as a node. So the node is an intersection point, the link is a the one node to another node or one intersection to another intersection the in between road is called as a link the average walking speed of pedestrian that mean all the people walking speed 1.5 meter to 2 meter per second for design purpose the average speed of the person 1.2 meter per second this 1.2 meter per second is only we can consider all the healthy persons can walk the road 1.2 meter per second. Now, the next basic is classification of roads. The classification of roads classified into there are three categories. The first one based on traffic volume. The next one based on load transport or load tonnage. The third classification location 
and function. Now, the base and traffic volume road again subclassify into high class road, medium class road, and low class road. This high class, medium class, or low class categories based on the traffic volumes. The next one, based on the load transport or tonnage. We can easy to understand load transport or tonnage. Based on the carrying capacity of the road, the road can be classified whether it is a A class road, B class road, or C class road, and so on. Are same like that we can classify first class road, second class road, or third class road, and so on. This location and function classification of the road subcategory into based on the city road, or we can call it as a urban road. The next classification rural road, or we can call it as a village roads. The last category, the location and function of the road, again subdivided into urban or city roads or rural or village roads. This urban roads, again further subclassification, have the first one, express road, the second one, arterial street the next one subarterial street fourth one collector street fifth one local street the last one, Kaldi Sank. Kaldi Sank means it is a dead end. So these are six categories called as a urban or city roads. The next category, the rural or village road, again sub classified into five classification the first one national highway we can say this nh the second classification state highway we can say this one sh the third classification, major district road, major district roads, this one we can say that MDR, the fourth classification, other district road, This is O D R, the last one, village roads. Village roads, we can say this one V R. So these are the urban classification of the roads and rural classification of the roads. So now I think you can understand what is the classification of the roads based on the traffic volume, based on the load transport or a tonnage based on the location and function. So kindly understand, we are not following nowadays traffic and load transport classification of the roads. We are following only based on the location and function category of the roads. The next basic is design speed. The design speed is very very important term we need to understand because these all roads are designed 
to travel all the drivers with maximum safe speed that means the design speed means the express way design 100 km per hour arterial streets are designed 80 km per hour subarterial street design 60 km per hour collector streets are designed to travel 50 km per hour local street or cul-de-sac are designed 30 km per hour the same like that the rural roads also designed to travel national highway or state highway 100 km per hour major districts are designed 80 km per hour other district roads are designed 65 km per hour the last one village roads are designed 50 km per hour kindly don't violate these design speed numbers because these numbers are maximum safe speed if you are violating this number of speeds you may meet accidents so kindly avoid the accident be unsafe again the roads are classified based on the lane so if it is a single lane we can call it as a single lane road if it is a two lane we can call it as a two lane road if it is a multi lane we can call it as a multi lane road the single lane road the width of the pavement we can consider it is 3.5 meter the 3.5 meter is arrived the overall all the vehicle width is the maximum they are considered 2.5 meter the remaining 0.5 meter one side the another 0.5 meter another, another side they are considered as a clearance so that based on this assumption the road width is considered 3.5 meter for a single lane road the single lane road can carry both the direction of the vehicles this is called single lane road the same like that the two lane two way road means there are two lanes the lane one and lane two these two lanes are carry the opposite direction of the vehicle one lane will carry for one direction the another lane can carry for the another direction of the vehicle so this is called as a two lane two way direction of the roads first category is multi lane road we know the term it is a different lanes for one direction itself we have a different lanes more than two lanes are called as a multi lane for only one direction we have a three lanes another direction we have another three more lanes this is called as a multi lane roads everybody here the terminology is carriageway pavement roadway is it everything same no carriageway means it is a different pavement means different and roadway means it is a different meaning what is the meaning for these three terms means carriageway means we can denote a geometric or traffic path we can use carriageway the pavement means only we can use pavement design or we can say the thickness required to construct the roads that means the various thickness of the roads like a subgrade, subbase, base course or surface course like this how much thickness required for the each layer it is called as a pavement design when we are talking about the thickness of the pavement at the time we need to call it as a pavement the last one roadway the roadway means the width of the road plus both the side shoulder both the side shoulder plus you can add footpath this all together overall width is called as a roadway so the roadway 
pavement carriage way it is not a same term the carriage way means when we are talking about the geometric design of a highway or a traffic design of a highway at the time we can use the term carriage way the pavement means when we are talking about the thickness of the layers of the pavement we can call as a pavement the roadway means the total width of the road plus shoulder plus footpath in all together the overall width of the road we can call as a roadway so please understand the carriage way pavement roadway it is not a same term it these are a different meanings again some terminologies of bitumen asphalt or tar these are the same meaning or different meanings obviously uh, bitumen and asphalt are same there is no different between bitumen and asphalt then why it is different and what way it is a different means the bitumen we can call the name in india the same bitumen we can call as a asphalt in us and uk then the bitumen is the last product of petroleum process the tar is the last product of coal coal the next one is very very important uh, basics we need to understand the basic is driver reaction time or we can also called as p i e v t r e all the drivers should understand what is meant by driver's reaction time and what way it is useful for us the driver's reaction time means the driver's thinking time while traveling in a road when some obstacles available before us how to face the situation or how to stop the vehicle without accident for this thinking time we can call as driver's reaction time what is the abbreviation for p i e v t r e the p i e v means the total reaction time of the driver split it into four parts the first one perception that's mean p the next one intellection that's i the third one emotion that is a e the last one volition that is a v this is called as a p i e v theory this p i e v theory we can also called as a reflex action we know that the reflex action means the first when the driver traveling in a road the driver seeing some obstacle before the vehicle the seeing the obstacle by the driver this is me perceiving the driver perceived some obstacles are there before us so that's me it is a p after perceiving the obstacle the driver thinking how to overcome this situation or how to avoid the accident so the driver is using his brain and thinking option to overcome the situation the driver is thinking there are three situations maybe the first one we can travel up to the obstacle and stop before the obstacles the second option the driver may take some diversion and overcome the third option the driver may not stop or may not take diversion he may overrun above the obstacle these are the three option the driver is thinking in a brain this is called as a intellectual or intellection it is i once thinking the options the driver is going to apply any one option of the these three 
that is the selection of any one option for the action is called as a emotion that means the driver is going to choose any one option to avoid the accident this is emotion now the driver is chosen one option among these three and the last one is the driver is going to apply that action that application of the action is called as a response or we can say it is a volition based on this reflex action the driver is perceiving first the obstacle once perceiving the obstacle the driver thinking some option how to overcome the situation that options are it is a intellectual based on his brain he is going to choose some of the options after choosing some options among the some options he is going to decide any one option to apply practically that deciding option is called as a emotion after emotion or after choosing any one option the driver is going to apply practically to stop the vehicle so that action is called as a response or volition so now i think we can understand what is the meaning of the perception interaction and emotion of the driver the last is a volition how the reaction time is important to us the reaction time may be very few seconds but in this few seconds only we are meeting some accident kindly think properly and overcome the situation without met accident with safely for simple situation the total reaction time of the driver is 0.5 seconds if it is a complex situation it is 3 to 4 second but the average for design purpose we usually use 2.5 seconds for total reaction time of the driver hi viewers thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video is useful to everyone kindly watch the video subscribe and press the bell button thank you so much